Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight I've got a brand new concept to the channel for you. So normally I'll talk about a distillery where somebody's actually making whiskey, or I'll talk to you about an independent bottler where they'll take whiskey from all types of different distilleries, put it together and make their own thing. But tonight I'm going to be talking to you about an infusory. Now an infusory is a company that either sources whiskey or makes their own, puts them into a barrel and takes some oak staves and actually puts them into the whiskey to try to impart some certain flavors that they want to do. Now, this is kind of a cool concept. Now, you'll see something like this in Maker's Mark Private Select or Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. Now, in this case, I've got three different versions from the Broken Barrel Whiskey Company where they've done a Mizunara cask finish, they've done a sherried finish called the Cask of Amontillado, and then they've got a peated finish, which is called Isle of Peat. Now, all three of these are kind of a cool concept, and I loved that there was a, a spread of, you know, I mean, you've got super light to super heavy. So I, I actually, you know, was reached out to by the company, and I asked them to send me all three bottles. They just wanted me to do one of them, and I said, you know, I want to do all three. And I actually asked them as well to send along some of these pieces of wood, because I thought it would make kind of a cool visual for you guys. So this is Mizunara oak. This is oak from the sherry cask. And this one, unsurprisingly, is the one from the peated cask. So very cool to see. And I will tell you that peat wood smells really, really good um, if you like peat. So let's go into these whiskeys and just kind of talk about how they, they taste and how they smell. I'm not going to go super in depth here as far as the nose and the taste because frankly, there's a lot kind of going on here, but more so these unfortunately are, there's not a ton of these left. So they made about 66 uh, 6,600 of each one of these, and there's only a few hundred left across the country. So I'm more covering these as a concept and to let you know that their next thing is called a light whiskey, which is essentially corn whiskey. But corn whiskey is really good because if you think about the way that corn is just in general, it's kind of like a sweet, nice, almost like a lighter flavor and very much would be... Um, impacted by the way that we put different oak staves into it. So I'm actually excited to try some of those too, because I feel like it's almost just giving you a base that you're now gonna modify to whatever degree that you want. Um, so I was talking to the owner, his name's Seth, and he, he wouldn't tell me too much about what they were playing with that corn, uh, sorry, with the light whiskey, but I'm, I'm eager to see. So I've poured some of the Mizunara cask here, and I'm just gonna nose it for a minute. So, what I'm getting here, um, I'm not going to bother doing my normal notes here. I'm just going to kind of talk about this. Um, this is very light and florally. Uh, it's got the usual Mizunara that you would get in maybe like a Glendalo, um 13 with the Mizunara. It's, it's not Irish. It actually does have some of the bourbon influence there, but it's very light. It's got kind of a light florally note on top of a little bit of the vanilla. Um, no real oak going on there as far as the heavier oak that you might typically pick up in a bourbon. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. Hmm. So this one's got an interesting taste to it. It's actually that's, it keeps going. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, um, Obviously, I've drank a little bit of this, but I, it was a few days ago, and I had forgotten that the finish lasts for so long. So when you're talking about the, the taste of this one, it's for me, it's very heavy like a green apple. And uh, there's a, a bit of like an herbally note in there as well. It's extremely light is a good way to put it. It tastes as light as it looks. I don't know if the color is going to pick that up so well, but it is a very light whiskey, and it's it's very tasty. I, uh, I actually like this one a lot. Now, I will say that I am personally a big fan of Mizunara. I feel like you'd probably have to do something very wrong for me not to like anything that was even touched Mizunara, but oh well. You know, for me personally, this, if I were uh, just, I'll, you know, even spoil my own video here. If you happen to see the Mizunara out, pick this one up. So the prices on these are actually extremely affordable. It's like $45. So very, very surprisingly in, uh, inexpensive. So. I'm going to have one more sip of that. You know what's weird? I might be out of my mind here. I almost taste a little bit like what a lilac smells like, which is very strange. Not something I would uh, 
ever really pick up before. So I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, that was not at all in my notes. So maybe I'm out of my mind. <laughs> Next, I'm going to do the cast of Amontillado. This is aged uh, with or finished, I guess you would say, with sherried oak. So there's a nice, beautiful kind of sherry color there. Basically, this thing looks like if you were to buy a scotch this color, <laughs> you'd be spending a small fortune. Um, but it's obviously just got a very heavy oh, uh, sherried influence there. Now the color itself, whereas a lot of times you get kind of a red tint from something that's finished with sherry, something different about the way that this oak is actually finishing this. It gives it almost a brown color. I mean, I'm basically saying whiskey is brown. That's not exactly uh, world or, you know, mind breaking, but it's, it's a weird color. It's almost like a, like a, like a light chocolatey color. So anyway, let's go ahead and give this his nose. Not so much sherry coming across on the nose, actually. There's definitely some of it there, but it's not a heavy sherry. Um, not as much as you would think, especially seeing the color here. A <sighs> little bit of like a, like a plum kind of. No, nope, not plum. I'm gonna say it's it's like a black cherry. Um, almost like, almost like if you buy Luxardo cherries and uh, the the liquid that's in there as well kind of has a smell. You know that. A little bit of that. I, I, I realize I'm kind of all over the place here, but then again, these are all very different. So um, let's see. I feel like I want to give you something else here. There's really just not that much going on in the smell. It smells like a sherried whiskey, but kind of muted. So anyway, cheers. Vastly different than Mizunara. <laughs> I'll give it that. And uh, knowing I'm going into the peat next, it's going to get even even crazier. But this one has a almost like a like a red apple mixed with some raisins. It's it's got some like um what is the ter what is the thing I'm thinking of? Uh, shoot, I always forget the name of this. Uh, like coriander actually, which, which is strange. Um, the little bit of clove in there as well. Um, very strange for a sherried whiskey. Actually, the, the taste here is, is much different than you would assume in sherry. So if, if you are a fan of sherry, I would say that this, this is going to be kind of different than you're expecting, but let me see if there's anything else here. It's got like a viscosity to it that reminds me of caramel, but it doesn't taste like caramel. It's, it's more just like a, almost like a, not caramel, like a simple syrup. It's, it's got uh, like a heftiness to the, the body of the whiskey. All right, well, let's move on to peat. Now I am a personal big fan of peated whiskeys and I, I never like to talk over the, the pop. <laughs> so when I think about a peated whiskey, obviously I think about smoke but I also think about just in general, a very deep flavor, something that is gonna have a lot of character to it and something that um, possibly might be kind of a barrier to entry for, for some people. So let's go ahead and give this a smell. Hmm. Now I had this before on a live stream and before I taste this again, I will say that that one of my first impressions of the taste was that it, it instead of being smoky, it was more like funky, almost like a like a I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another whiskey that has this effect, but I call it a, a like almost like a mossy peaty funk, and it's almost like a mildew, but not like no, it's not like mildew because that kind of gives a negative connotation. It's just musty. Musty is probably a good way to put it. Um, when I nose this though, you don't get any of that. Not on the nose, Def I suspect I will on the taste, but on the nose it smells sweet, but there's an underlying hint of smoke, but more so <laughs> it smells, it just smells really, I wish I could put it in better words. It smells very interesting. Like this is something that would be fun for any of you to smell. Almost like if you were to have a sample of all different smells that you could smell in a whiskey, if this one was called like 
like moss. <laughs> I think that would probably be what I would call this. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. Hmm. So on the live stream, I had popped the corks and obviously you're gonna get kind of the most natural right out of the bottle kind of flavor. And nothing's gonna be muted, nothing's gonna have taken time to open up or aerate or anything. I've drank probably about, I don't know, down to here, so call that a fifth of it. And um, the taste has not changed considerably as of like a week ago, but it did change over the last few days apparently, because I, I think I had this over the weekend and I'm recording this actually on Wednesday. Um, you're gonna see this video tomorrow. Now, the, the funkiness is still there. It's a little bit more muted, but it is very different than what you would expect. If you find this one and you want to try it, I would say go in with no expectations, despite the fact that it says peat on it. Otherwise, you will probably not get what you're looking for. Just look at this as, at least the way I am, I've never tasted a whiskey like this in my life, and I don't dislike it. It is my least favorite of the three, fair, but I don't dislike it. It's just different. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's go ahead and um, I, I wanna take another couple tastes of this, but while, while I'm doing that, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, hit the subscribe button and you know it would help me a lot if you would hit the little bell notification next to the subscribe button, even if you're already subscribed, because then you'll get alerts on this and it's really good for the YouTube algorithm. So um, we'll help to promote my channel quite a bit more. So if you're already a subscriber, click on the bell. Thank you. Also, some really good links in the in the description, um, and I'll link to uh, Broken Barrel Whiskey Company's website as well. Um, this grows on you the more you drink. That first taste is really going to be a bit of a hit, but the more I drink of this, the more it's kind of growing on me. And I could see myself maybe adding some water to this, maybe even an ice cube, which is something I don't do very often. But I do think that that would taste good, a little bit cold, or possibly a little bit watered down. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit more about this company, but just, just a little bit. So they were started, they started in August of 2017, I believe. So they're super new, only a couple of years. That was when they put out their first batch. And like I mentioned, they're gonna be doing this light whiskey concept. But one thing that I thought was cool, so I actually called up the owner, his name's Seth, and I talked to him for a little bit, and he seemed like a really passionate guy, which I always love hearing when I talk to craft distillers. Um, or in this case, uh, you know, just somebody in the whiskey industry who's making something. Cause that's, those are the people who haven't, I guess sold out <laughs> might be a good way to put it. You know, for example, there, there's a company, I think they're called Devil's, Devil's River maybe. Um, they're claiming that they want to be the next Jack Daniels. And I talked to their representative and when I talked to him, like he just kind of kept saying, that they wanted to be the next Jack Daniels. They wanted to be huge. They wanted to be everywhere. And that's a fine thing for any company to want to be. Every company wants to grow. But he didn't talk all that much about the way that they make their whiskey and the way that you know it was something that they cared about. It really was all about the numbers and about getting there. And it, it was off-putting, honestly. But when I talked to Seth here, hearing about all the fun things he wants to try with the different oak staves and everything, I wanted him to be successful. And that's part of the reason that I agreed to do this, this video. Um, I like promoting smaller brands, but I only like promoting them if they're somebody that I think is cool or somebody that I think is doing something worthwhile. And in this case, the Broken Barrel Whiskey Company is doing something very worthwhile. And I think if you see any of their stuff, pick it up. It's going to be 45 to $50. That's very like reasonable for any sort of whiskey, especially something from a smaller distillery that isn't getting all of those bulk discounts. So I would suggest that you pick one of these or whatever you see coming up out from them and give them a chance. See if it's something that you like. It could be something very unique and you might not be able to get it ever again, which I know some of you that will appeal to. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and I appreciate you joining me here and have a great rest of your night. Cheers. Hey, thank you very much for watching the channel. I really appreciate it. So if you are at all interested in talking with a bunch of other whiskey nerds, check out the link below to Discord. In fact, I call it the Whiskord because it is a place for whiskey lovers to nerd out pretty hard. There's a few hundred people in there, uh, probably about a hundred of them that are pretty active. And we talk whiskey all the time. So 
if that's something, or if those sound like your people, by all means check it out. And normally I don't do this, I don't push too hard on the Patreon thing, but I'm this close to hitting my next goal, so I figure it's worth mentioning. So by all means, if it's something that you're interested in, or if you'd really like to help me support the channel, my next goal is pretty cool. It's about cocktails, and I'll let you go read all about it. So that link is also down in the description. Also, obviously, check out the merch that I sell, but in general, really pushing that Patreon a little bit. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and have a great rest of your day.